Se pedile la sui montagna o oh, bella ciao bella ciao bella ciao 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 e se pedile la sui montagna sotto l'ombra di un bel fiore e le genti che passeranno Oh bella ciao, bella ciao, bella ciao, ciao, ciao. E le gente che passeranno ti diranno che beffio. After exploring some of Rosario's landmarks and digging into a little bit of the history of Argentina's third largest city by population, our adventure continues as we dig even deeper into the city through focusing on places that have connections with some of the most famous people from Rosario. First thing first, it's breakfast time. The hotel where I stayed directly brought breakfast into my room. My first time of this kind of experience especially knowing that this was not a five-star hotel, nor did I pay for the amount of tariff five-star hotels normally charge. I was super impressed with the facility and the service at this hotel, and I would definitely stay again if I ever come back to Rosario. That is, if ever. Anyways, let's start our new day of exploration. Uh, good morning everyone it's also another very very nice day today I have to say that uh, so far my favorite part of Rosario is still the Palana River right behind me we've got lots of actions today especially in the afternoon I'm gonna do something very very special okay enough talking why don't we jump into action here in Rosario right now. This complex you see is the cultural center and park that was constructed by Spain as a gift to the city of Rosario to commemorate the 500th anniversary of Spanish landing in the Americas. Yeah, so this complex is here to glorify colonialism, kind of. But the reason why I think people should come here and take a look is because this is one of the rare places in a city where you get to see Rio Palana from a bird's eye view. What's going on? Another very interesting thing to see close to the Spanish cultural center and park is the graffitis close by. You get to see a lot of different subjects from a green monkey, to the internal football legend Diego Maradona, to hometown heroes and future football legends Liano Messi and Angel Di Maria.
Continue walking along the bank of Rio Paraná. I passed by the old dog warehouses that are now repurposed as a local youth center and an art exhibition facility. Oh, I think I was here just the previous evening. That means we're right by the giant Lionel Messi mural and the national flag monument of Argentina. Well, I didn't realize yesterday that there is this sign for the point where you can see the panoramic view of the flag monument. Oh well, I guess second time is the charm. All right, we're now back at the uh, Monumento Nacional a la Bandera. We talked about this magnificent monument in details on the previous day in the previous video. If you haven't seen it, please make sure to check it out. I'll drop the link in the description box below. Look at the colors of the sky. It's blue and white, just like the Argentinian flag. Since I got into this area again, I went to check out the interior of the Rosario Cathedral. I also made a quick stop by Plaza 25 de Mayo as well. This time, a sign that I did not pay attention to the previous day caught my attention. Upon searching on Google, I found out that Rosario, just like Cordoba, was one of the hardest hit cities by the Dirty War, which we talked about during our visit to Cordoba. Again, I'll leave the link to the episodes where we looked into this subject in the description box below. Many young Rosalinos who had left-leaning beliefs or simply opposed the military dictatorship between 1960s and 1980s were secretly arrested, tortured, and executed as parts of the much larger scheme in Argentina and across Latin America, known as Operations Condor. Following the fall of the military dictatorship, mothers whose children fell victims to the dirty war began to march on this plaza to seek justice for the children as well as raising awarenesses to the public that such tragedies should not happen again. People should not lose their lives or dignities for what they believe in. There are weekly marchings being held right here on the plaza every Thursday by an association started by these mothers, also known as Mothers of Plaza 25 de Mayo. It was a Thursday on that day, so I came back a bit later as my way of paying respect and supporting the cause. Many of the mothers might have passed away, or be unable to participate in weekly marchings anymore. But I'm glad that their works and visions are carried on by the next generation who felt their pains, and wanted to ensure that there will be civil liberty and human rights for the generations to come. At the same time, I couldn't help but wonder 
if the most famous Rosarino of the 20th century was born a few decades later? What would happen? Would he also be a victim of the dirty war? I mean, he became a victim of his own beliefs and was persecuted by the very same government that sponsored Operation Condor. But maybe there would be one less global icon, and the title of being the most famous Rosarino in the 20th century will probably be somebody else. Anyways, despite being a very controversial figure, even in Rosario, that the tourism industry showed almost no enthusiasm in tying his name to a reason why you should come to the city of Rosario. I found out that there are still places associated with him in the city today where you can visit. Remember this building from the previous episode? Why don't we start from right here? Yeah, behind me is a sign that shows the place where Che Guevara was born. And all you have today here is a sign and、uh, a garbage can. Okay, I understand that not everyone might know who Ernesto Che Guevara is. For those of you who already know, good for you. For those of you who don't, Che was a Marxist revolutionary and one of the leading figures in establishing the communist rule in Cuba. Even if you have never heard of his name before, chances are you have seen this picture. We'll get into the story behind this picture a bit later, but the building you see right here was the location where Che Guevara was born in 1928. It may not be the original building, and even if it is. The internal structure probably changed a lot since then, but hey, at least the city of Rosario was nice enough to put its signage here for those who are interested in seeing where one of the most famous Rosarinos was born. Yeah, as some of you may know, Che Guevara was not only a famous revolutionary that was from Rosario, but he was also known for his book. The motorcycle diaries, in which he rode a motorcycle across Latin America and wrote down what he saw. There is even a motorcycle in the background right here. When the journey across Latin America began, Ernesto Guevara was a medical student who aspired to become a doctor, curing people's illnesses. He had encounters with many people of different backgrounds, from residents of a leper colony to miners, farmers, and political outcasts. By the end of the trip, Ernesto Guevara was a changed man. He believed that while doctors could only cure diseases, they couldn't help people to live well for the rest of their lives. Some people were too poor to have access to a doctor, while many others died because of terrible living and working conditions. Poverty, inequality, and exploitations were causes that made people suffer even worse than being sick. From that point on. There was one less doctor in Argentina, but one more communist revolutionary in the world. And of course, it also makes Rosario the starting point of that epic motorcycle journey. South of the city center, there is actually a plaza dedicated to Che Guevara. I found out that you can use Subway card from Buenos Aires for taking the buses in Rosario as well, so I hopped onto one. The plaza is located right next to an old train station, the Central Cordoba Station, presumably where once upon a time trains from Rosario to Cordoba departed from. You immediately see several references to Guevara in the surrounding area. Including possibly the only statue of him in his hometown. Yeah, behind me there is a statue of Ernesto Che Guevara. Yeah, apparently、uh, this place kind of looks abandoned, so Che did not get the same attention as either the founding fathers of Argentina or maybe even Diego Maradona. After dedicating his life to the revolutionary cause, Guevara gained a new nickname, Che, because of his usage of this popular Argentinian Spanish term. Which often amused his comrades from other Latin American countries. Think of Che as the Argentinian version of mate or a in Australian and Canadian English. In Mexico City, 1955, Guevara, who was originally trained as a doctor, met someone from Cuba that changed the course of his life. 
Fidel Castro, who was originally trained as a lawyer. For those of you thinking about sending your kids to medical schools or law schools,、uh, think again. Not all law school or medical school graduates will end up being lawyers or doctors. The rest was history. Che Guevara joined Fidel and his brother Raúl's revolutionary group, and in 1959 established the only communist regime ever existed in the Americas. Che himself was the commander of the most decisive battle in securing the revolutionaries' victory, the Battle of Santa Clara, and then served as the president of Cuba's National Bank and the Minister of Industries. In 1965. Che Guevara gave up everything in Cuba, including his power, status, and even Cuban citizenship. He left Fidel Castro a farewell letter, and decided that his life should be dedicated to the greater cause of what he viewed as the ultimate way to liberation: establishing communism across the world. He first joined the revolutionaries in Congo, and finally in Bolivia, where he was captured and executed by the CIA and the Bolivian army in 1967. To many, Che Guevara was a hero, an idealist who fought and died for what he believed in, without compromising to materialistic pursuits like power and status. To many others, he was a cold and brutal man who was responsible for the killings of people whom he saw as enemies. To the majority of us, he was the man in this iconic picture taken in 1960. When he and Fidel Castro were attending a memorial service for the explosion of a cargo ship in Havana, after the end of Che's dramatic life, this picture became the symbol of the ideas he believed in and the struggles he vowed to fight during the short 39 years of his lifetime. While Che Guevara and Diego Maradona might be the most famous Rosalino and the greatest Argentine football player in the 20th century, however, the most famous Rosalino and the greatest Argentine football player in the 21st century have become the one and the same person. Our adventure in Rosario will continue as we dig into the story and actual locations in the city that are associated with some say the GOAT of football. What are we going to see? Follow me to the next episode.